Gentlemen and uh, ladies, if there is any out there, uh, don't think there is, but if there is, so much the better. Uh, anyway, under consideration today is actually um, uh, the SX4's cooling system, um, and in particular, um, the fan operation. Uh, there's two fans, not shown on this particular drawing because it's actually considered part of the, uh, the AC system is the uh, condenser fan. So what we're talking about is the, uh, the engine coolant fan proper, um, shrouded fan on a radiator with a motor assembly, right? Nothing new there. So what we're actually interested in here is the operation because there is actually two speeds. My color coding is uh, the yellow, is a, is a fixed 12 volts. Um, orange, of course, is as my legend here shows, is a switch 12 volts. That is to say, perhaps it's switched by a relay, maybe the, uh, the engine control module itself or another module, but again, we'll consider that. Um, supposedly blue, but turned out, turned out a wee bit violet on the uh, on the paper, is a switch ground, and of course, a fixed ground itself is actually shown in green. Well, first things first up on the top of the drawing, we've actually got in the uh, distribution box itself on the car, we've got some um, heavy, uh, heavy fuses that actually feed the... Uh, the cooling fan on the car, as you can imagine, uh, they can draw quite a bit of current, hence the uh, the 30 amp fuse. On the control side of things, it's actually FI fuel injection. This is actually one of the main relays in the car, uh, essentially arming the low speed relay, waiting for the condition of the engine coolant temp to exceed 94 degrees, at which point in time, the engine control module will put a, put a control ground onto the relay, putting power to the fan to run it in a low speed mode. And at the same time as it does so, it actually arms these other two relays, waiting for the temperature to exceed 104 degrees. The engine control module will apply uh, control ground. It will pull down the circuit here, applying two grounds simultaneously to both of these relays, applying high speed power and high speed ground at the mower. The manual actually shows you uh, where the distribution box actually is, where the three relay relays actually are. I uh, color coded these uh, just for my understanding really. Uh, that's the low speed, high speed and the ground uh, switching uh, relays uh, that we just spoke of on the schematic. It gives you uh, some basic uh, temperature, uh, some basic testing procedures for actually checking the uh, the cooling fans. So we've disconnected the connector. So this is the fan side, not the harness side. So we can actually check between these two pins and it says check for continuity. That would be just a basic, a basic check of the the motor, of course, there is no specs with respect to uh, what it should actually read. It just tells you to check for continuity. And actually tells you, it gives you a little test setup here, how you can actually jump power from a 12 volt battery, likely the, the battery in the car itself, although you could do it on the bench as well, obviously, uh, where you actually apply power and ground to this configuration on the pinout. And that gives you current draw specs. Um, for the low and high speed modes. So maybe we'll do that as well. Uh, tells you how to actually function check the relays. Uh, we'll make this brief. I think it's it's likely that most people know how the relay actually works. So here's the relay itself that we, that we looked at on the schematic. If you don't didn't understand how this actually works, you probably would have struggled to understand the explanation on the schematic. Essentially a coil and some switching contacts. If you put a power on a ground onto this coil, the magnetic field energizes around the coil, pulling the uh, pulling the contact up, and uh, which was previously an open circuit between these two contacts, C and D, would now be a closed circuit. So it gives you facility to switch. Um, usually high current applications, i.e. the fan, with, uh, with extremely light gauge wire on the control side of things, on the coil side, if you will. So uh, yeah, that's just a, a brief, re and it gives you again the, uh, a little t um, bench testing setup for how you actually check the reel. So we're out of the car here. Uh, I've got my clamp on amp meter around the, uh, the battery ground, as you can see, so we can monitor the uh, current draw on the fans. Getting to the harness on the, uh, on the fan is a wee bit tricky. Uh, and I think we can manage to get a ballpark figure of the current draw right from the ground anyway. We'll zero it once we're ready to test. That's just uh, ancillaries running at the moment. I've got the key on, the engine's not running obviously, so it is drawing some current. We're gonna simulate the, uh, via the decade box, I've got the uh, engine coolant uh, temp sensor disconnected. So I've got a back probe there. Uh, the intake air temp is the ambient temperature in my garage at the moment, roughly, so um, about 12 degrees is the actual temperature that would be reading. Uh, the engine coolant temperature and the intake air temperature are usually pretty close to one another sitting at ambient the car has not been running for an extended period of time so again, the point of the video is here is that we can actually although we don't have bi-directional controls on this 
low cost scan tool, shall we say? Um, we can actually we can actually function the two modes on the uh, on the uh, on, on the fan, uh, the engine coolant fan, uh, and we'll do so right now. Here's the uh, distribution box. I've actually got the uh, I've got the lid removed. It sits right here. Left hand fender up against the uh, the shock tower there. Um, and these are the three relays, if you recall. So that's the low speed mode, that's the high speed mode, and that's the ground uh, configuring uh, relay. Um, yeah, so at the moment, uh, this relay will in fact look for a ground that's coming from the engine uh, control module. Um, and that one will energize when the temperature, or at least it thinks the temperature, reaches in and around 99 degrees. Unfortunately, 99 degrees is the transition between 200 ohms and 99 ohms here. So I have to actually monkey with the switches a wee bit because, because of the nature of a decade box to go from 199 to 200 means transitioning all these switches. So we'll get it as close as we can. So at the moment, there's no fans running as you can hear. So this would be a normal scenario, of course, with the engine coolant temperature at 19 degrees C. So I'm just going to zero this because this is, as I said, just ancillary draw. So we'll zero the the amp meter. So there, all the ancillaries are still running, but because we've zeroed it, that's not being taken into account on the amp meter. So we'll step up through the decade box here. <clears throat> we'll actually step down the uh, the temperature, step down the resistance, stepping up the temperature. So then we've got 33 degrees. 65 degrees, sorry about the big jumps in the steps, but again, I'm just trying to deal with the decade box here. 72 degrees, 82 degrees, so 97 degrees, we're getting very close to the threshold of the fan actually kicking in in the low speed mode, and you'll hear it. We'll check the current draw when it does so. So, I'm just gonna, Go back up for a second so I can get to 199. This is the bugger I'm talking about with the decade box. So there's 99 degrees. You can see the fan actually cut in. It looks like the fan is drawing in and around 7 amps. So let's just let's just crank that temperature. There's the cutout again. And we're back to zero on the amp meter, so I'll just do that. Just keep you focused on the amp meter here. So there, that's the low speed mode on the fan. And we'll continue, so that's just one coil operating on the fan, if you will. We'll continue to crank the temperature up here. It's 101. And then around 104 degrees there. And we've got almost 10 amps of current. So again, I'll take you back. That's 103 degrees. Back to 101. And I think you can hear the transition. I don't know if you can hear the relay click there or not. Let's see if I can get you in there. It's pretty cold in my garage here. Of course, that's when the battery actually dies on the camera. So in the event you can't hear the click on the relay, Keep an eye on the compass there. So we're at 83 degrees and we're going to transition above 99 degrees here. We'll go to 99 degrees there. Yeah. So you can see I'm just toggling between those two values. Watch the compass. It'll pick up the mag uh, field on the uh, relay. And you can see the relay actually actuating there if you can't hear it. While we're on the other relays this time. The second stage in the ground. Just to prove the point they are in fact energizing. So 104 degrees there, high speed, 99 degrees low speed, and of course anywhere below, what was that, I said 99 degrees ish. The below 99 degrees, the fans are in fact stopped. Anyway, I hope that uh, was somewhat interesting. 
hopefully that proved the point on the uh, uh, the two different modes of operation. Um, also interesting is the fact that the condenser fan here on the other side of the uh, car, when the car does go in an overheat configuration, uh, I guess there's a failure strategy uh, employed by the uh, ECM that actually turns on the condenser fan as well. Um, that is just a two wire fan it looks like though so uh, I assume there's only one speed associated with that. I want to show you the current draw on that. Um, so we're talking about um, the ECU actually having the uh, um, an overheat strategy where either, even if the air conditioning is actually selected off it'll actually run the uh, condenser fan uh, when we actually have an overheat scenario. What temperature that overheat is, I don't know uh, since I put my scan tool away, but um, I'm just going to simulate it here on the uh, on the decade box. So that's low speed fan operation. High speed fan operation. And overheat. So we're operating the acrylic fan in high speed mode. And the condenser fan is actually running as well. So you can take the differential on the two readings on the current. So the condenser fan draws about seven amps as well. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Okay, this thing. Cheers.